Hey everybody, I'm Mike Meyer from Mike Meyer Incorporated, and I want to talk to you about a really common phone call we get, like every day. And the funny thing about this phone call is we don't sell this product, but we still get it all the time. So you know what? We're going to do a video for you guys about it. It's about wheel fitment. How do we find out what size wheel we're going to put in our car? And the truth of the matter is, anybody you call about your car is probably going to be smart enough to tell you, I don't know. Because if you buy a wheel with someone on the other side of the phone halfway across the country and them saying, oh, this fits, the chances are it might not fit because they're not measuring your car. So let's walk through a couple of things that you're going to need to do on your car with your tape measure to help you find out what wheel should fit your car the best. The other thing about fitting up wheels, when you feel that little feeling in your stomach, like I'm not sure if this is the right wheel that I, you know, did I measure it right? You're not alone. The professionals think that way too. Whenever I do wheels on my car, I'm commonly looking over to my friend, the hammer to make sure it fits once I get the wheels just in case. So, it's definitely a little bit of a squirrely uh, deal, but the more measurements you take, the better chances you get, and the more little tidbits of information like this you get, the better chances you, you're gonna have of getting that wheel to fit right. So what we have here is a old school Mustang, because that's what we do here. And these are some, uh, this is the back axle of the car. And we're just gonna go over some numbers. It's gonna be kind of a clunky video, but we're just going to go through some things for you to be attentive to. I measured up a guy's car the other day <clears throat> and it's a 68 Mustang. So 68 Mustangs have an axle housing width of 59 and 5 eighths inches. It's a stock eight inch housing. And the thing is you want to measure your housing, if, especially if you have an old school or let's say you have a new Mustang and it's independent. You want to put a jack stand under the rear suspension and physically drop a plumb bob down to the ground and measure out along the ground to those marks and see where these hub faces are unto each other. So with an old school Mustang, we know that this measurement's 59 and 5 eighths. Perfect. And again, I really encourage you to check this. I know this because I've measured the housing. A lot of these cars in 1978 might have had a Granada housing put in it, and that's not the same. So double check your numbers on what the actual housing width is. The other thing that we've done is this varies a lot. You want to hang a plumb bob from the inside edge of your wheel well lip to the ground. And I don't know if you guys know what a plumb bob is. It's, it's basically one of those strings and then there's a little weight with a pointer on the bottom. You can hang the weight and then it makes a mark on the ground. A lot of times I'll put a piece of tape on the ground and I'll put a little X right where that guy marked the ground. And then I'll go ahead and run a tape, do the plumb bob off of that edge right there. I'll do it off the inside wheel well edge here. So now I know on this car, it's 70 and a quarter inches from inside wheel well lip to inside wheel well lip. This is a number I just pulled out of my rear. It's not an exact number. I didn't take that note. I honestly forgot to write that down in my notes. So this number is not a real number. Total made it up. It might be close, but good luck. All right. So in this image, in this drawing, we know that the housing is 59 and 5 eighths. We know the inside wheel well lip to inside wheel well lip is 70 and a quarter. The other thing that we need to know on a Mustang, there's, you know, you've got your wheel wells. Let's see here, what color do we want to, oh, orange looks good. We're going to go up, the wheel well goes up, and it comes down like so on the inside. One of the common areas for tires to hit is right here, because it goes up and it hits. So a lot of times what I've done is I've taken a hammer and I've tapped this back carefully, give me a little bit more room right in here. The other thing that is a limiting factor on these old school Mustangs is the leaf spring. So the leaf spring on an old school Mustang is 43 inches from center to center. The outside edge of the leaf spring is 45 and a half inches. So outside to outside is 45 and a half. So we've got this leaf here, the actual leaf stack, 
45 inches outside edge, 45 inches. This is the last stop before you really start running into a hard stop. We can always tap back little bit sections of the inner wheel well, you know, little bits, not a lot, just to get a little extra room. But the hard stop is the leaf spring width. So we know the wheel or the, the housing's 59 and 5 eighths. We know that the leaf spring outside width is 45 and a half. And we know outside to outside is 70 and a quarter. <clears throat> so what we now have to do is we kind of got to do some measuring here. We know, what did I say? 45 and a half and 70 and a quarter, that number there. Let's get the trusty calculator out. I'm going to do 70.25 minus 45.5. That's 24 and three quarters. Okay. Just hold on to that number in a, for a second. That divided by two is 12.375. 12.375 is the room we have, it's the size of the hole from here basically to the leaf spring. It's the size of the, that's how much space we have to work with. So you can't get a bigger tire than 12.375, just square peg round hole, okay? The other thing that we also, a little bit of information here, is you want room between the wheel well lip and the tire, and you want room between the leaf spring and the tire, because the tire moves, it flexes. The axle, the physical axle flexes and moves. I like to have, at about three quarters of an inch room minimum right here. So this measurement from the inside wheel well lip to the edge of the tire, I like that. I like to start somewhere around this number. Please do not take that as God's honest truth because that's just me. And sometimes my tires rub. So if you want to be a little more conservative, push it in a little bit. Um, one of the other things I do is I'll put, we'll talk about this in a second, I'll move the wheel in a little bit on the wheel size and fitment so I can shim it back out. We'll talk about that in a minute. But this space here, I like to have about three quarters of an inch room for me. And on the inside, minimum's about a half inch for this. But if you've got a 15 inch wheel, let's just say, and you got a big balloon mushroom tire, I mean, just this big marshmallow thing, you might need to make this 0.5 actually grow up to be an inch and a quarter. So this number between the inside wheel or the edge of the sidewall of the tire and the leaf spring can grow with the bigger and the more balloony your sidewall is. So if you've got a 17 or an 18, we'll hover around a half inch of room, three quarters of a half inch. If you've got a 15 inch wheel, you're probably going to be more into the inch and a quarter, inch and a half range. So three quarters of an inch. And this one, the reason why this gets a little bit bigger is because when you go around a turn, the tire will flex inward and it'll pull more in than it does out. And it'll tend to hit the leaf spring more so than that lip there. So, okay. So we know that we have a gap here a gap here, we're just gonna go with my numbers, three quarters, half inch, so that's an inch and a quarter. So our hole now, 12 and three eighths, minus an inch and a quarter, 1.25 equals 11 and an eighth. So now we truly know in this car, now this again, I keep saying, this is my drawing, this is not all perfectly real, so measure your own car. It's just showing you how to do this. This car here in our little diagram is showing that this tire, the actual space that we have, let's go over here actually, this tire can be 11.125. Well, 125 is just an eighth, so it's gonna do that. So we have this edge, this room here. Okay. So now we know we have an 11 
one eighth inch total tire width available to us in this hole because we gave ourselves room here. We gave ourselves room here. We measured the distance from the leaf to the wheel well lip. We know that's the size that we have available to us. So now we're going to look at this wheel size here. How do we figure out what this wheel is going to be? This is a big question. Everybody's like, Hey, do I do this tire or that tire? You really got to know <clears throat> that tires are like shoes. You can buy a size 11 in a Nike. You can buy a size 11 in a van and they're going to be different. So don't expect tire companies. If you go to a BFG or a Falcon tire, just because you bought a 235, 40, whatever tire, it's not going to be the same as the other one. So you got to take the time to look up on their website. Um, a lot tire rack has some good information like that. I really like Falcon. If you go directly to falcontire.com, there are a sizes and specifications chart per the tire. So you can look up Falcon 660, um, the RT 660s, and then you can look up size and specifications and it'll come up with a big chart. And that chart will tell you the diameter of the tire. It will tell you the width of the tire. And not only will it tell you the width of the tire, It'll tell you the width of the tire on the wheel that they measured it. So they'll say this tire fits a nine inch to a 10 inch wheel, but we measured it on a nine and a half. And so when they say that they're talking about if this rim is narrower or wider, it will change the bulge of the sidewall. Okay. So if we know that we have an 11 and eighth inch tire, there's some other little informational bits here to back into this wheel. Normally the tire on a 17 or an 18, not a 15, it's going to be a little more so on a 15. And I honestly haven't used 15s in a long time. So I'm going to let you guys do the measuring on that because I'm not super sharp on that one. So I'm going to go with a 17 or an 18 on the edge of the sidewall from this edge to here to the B to the wheel is roughly, you can count on about a quarter of an inch, okay, of hangover from this sidewall edge to the bead of the wheel. It's kind of a standard, it's kind of a standard offset. So I'm gonna do one quarter here, just for fun, there. And then right here, we got a quarter of an inch here. So we know now that this 11 and an eighth Right here, we're going to subtract a quarter of an inch per side, which is a half inch. So I'm really terrible at math. So that's going to be 10 and five eighths, right? So we're going to take a half inch off of this tire width because the tire can be 11 and an eighth, but this wheel is going to be a 10 and a half inch wheel because that's what that is. It, it's a quarter inch in on each side and you can look on your, on your chart to see this is on a tire that's actually fitting on the wheel. We're not stretching in it. We're not pinching it. It's kind of average. So this is 10.5 inch wheel to the outside of the lip on the bead. Okay. But it's important to know this is not a 10 and a half inch wheel. This is actually a nine and a half inch wheel because the manufacturer measures the wheel. I'm going to come down here because I got a lot of stuff written on the top. They measure the wheel from where the sidewall touches the wheel. So their measurements are here, not out here at the edge of the bead. So this is a 9.5 inch wheel and this bead here, to hear the little wheel bead that we always munch when we hit a curb or a sidewalk when we're trying to parallel park, that bead is a half inch on each side. Okay. So we get a half inch extension on the inside, on the outside that make up a full width of 10 and a half inches of that wheel, but they'll call it based on the measurement on the inside. So we have a nine and a half inch wheel with a 10 and a half inch overall width. Now this 10 and a half inch overall width is pretty important because what we need to do is we need to find out what the backspace is. So the backspace, 
will be, and there's three different ways, I'm gonna back up here real quick. There's three different ways to talk about wheel size. You can talk about backspace or figuring out where the center goes in the wheel. Let's just say where the center goes in the wheel. Backspace is the measurement from where the wheel touches the drum or the, or the hub face to the lip of the wheel, or that's, that's BS, backspace, or you can measure from here to the front lip. That would be called front space. Holy crap, that's like an innovative name. Front space, backspace. Next thing you do, which I don't do, is offset. You ever hear people say 30 millimeter offset, positive offset, negative offset? That is how far off center the hub face is from the center line of the hoop, of the wheel hoop. So if this is this way or that's the way, they'll call that a negative or a positive offset in X amount of millimeters. I didn't grow up in a metric world, so I'm gonna let you guys figure that one out. I talk in backspace. I'm kind of an old crusty guy like that. So this car here, we're gonna figure out what our backspace is gonna be. So a 10 and a half inch wheel, we need to find out what this backspace is. So let's come back to our bigger drawing here. Um, we have a 59 and 5 eighths. We know that we, know that we have a 11 and an eighth inch tire that we can put in there. Okay, so we have 59 and 5 eighths, and we know that, ooh, okay, I'm gonna start here with 45 and a half, actually. 45 and a half plus a half inch on each side, that's gonna be 46 and a half. Now this is where I'm gonna get a little mixed up here, and I'm gonna, it's gonna take me a minute here. 46.5 is leaf to leaf, I mean, I mean tire to tire. Okay, so that's 46.5 tire to tire. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in 11 and a half, I'm thinking, or 11 and, uh, 11 and an eighth. Sure, why not? Let's see here. Oh, oh, I know what we can do. Let's do this. Let's do 46.5 plus 11.125, and I'm gonna add that again for the other side, plus 11.125 equals 68.75. So I'm gonna change this. 68.75 is the outside edge of tire to outside edge of tire. So this means I should have, what's that 70, uh, 70 70.25 minus 68.75 equals 1.5, which means we have 1.5 total gap, which is three quarters of an inch per side. All those numbers are starting to check out. Sweet. Okay, so now where we're at is we're gonna find the front space and then we're gonna find the back space from this. So what we're gonna do is we know the outside of tire to outside of tire with our three quarter inch gap on each side is 68 and three quarters. We know that the hub face to hub face is 59 and 5 eighths. So we're gonna, I'm gonna subtract these two. Six, Oh, excuse me, 68.75 minus 59.625 equals nine and an eighth. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to divide that in half equals 4.562 front space. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm just gonna write Front space equals 4.562. And then I can also do the same thing here. I know it's a, it's an 11 and an eighth inch wheel. 11.125 minus 4.562.
equals 6.563. So the back space is 6.563. Okay, now what we want to do is we know that, that measurement was off the tire. It's not off a wheel yet, but we know all these other things, so we just keep backing into it. We know we need to take a quarter inch off of the front space because we've got this bulge. We gotta take a quarter inch off the back space. So 6.563 minus 0.25 equals 6.313. So this is actually 6.313 to the wheel. Okay, 4.562 minus 0.25 equals 4.312. is actual. Now, you're not going to sit there and go to your most wheel manufacturers and say, yeah, I need a 6.313 backspace. Not so much. Um, but if we add this together, 4.312 plus 6.313 equals 10 and 5 eighths. Okay, it's really close. 10 and a half is what we said here with the bulge of the tire. So we know that this is saying 10 and 5 eighths. Okay. Most wheel manufacturers don't have a 10 and 5 eighths wheel. You kind of got to go into a little real, uh, realism here. You can either choose to round up or choose to round down to an average number. I'm going to go to a 10 and a half because I always know that um, Tire rub is an issue. You always want the most tire to get the stout look that you're looking for. Worse than that is driving your car every day, smoking a set of sidewalls. So I'm gonna go to a 10 and a half. And the other thing I'm gonna choose is I'm gonna choose to take that away from the, um, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna cheat it on the backspace side. I want the tire to come in a little bit. So I'm gonna say I want a 10 and a half and I want to take a eighth of an inch uh, from the front space. So um, I'm probably going to, as my own personal choice, mm, I said eighth of an inch. You can do a six and a half inch back space. Okay. And so what's that? Ten and a half. Ten point five. Minus 6.5 equals 4 inches. Sorry, I should know that offhand. I'm terrible at this. This is a 4 inch front space and 6.5 back space. Now, why did I do that? Why did I go in further? It doesn't, this isn't something you have to do. You can do a 6 and a quarter and, you know, and a four and a quarter and shrink your wheel down a little bit. Well, that's, you can do that. Um, you can do that. You can do a six, a four and a quarter and a six and a quarter, and that's going to get you right to 10 and a half. You definitely can do that. Um, and I, in fact, that might be better than what I was saying, but what I was, let's go down the route. I was about to go down. If I cheat it inboard, then what this allows me to do is move the wheel a little too far in and everybody's going to go crazy in the comments and below. You're going to be, oh, it's crazy. Whatever. <laughs> this is what I do. I'll put a good set of studs, a good set of wheel studs, and I'll get a good set of spacers and I'll plan to shim an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch shim or, or wheel spacer, an eighth or a quarter. You, your car's not going to fall in half if you have an eighth inch washer or shim or, an, or a quarter inch uh, uh, sh uh, wheel spacer in there. If I go too far in, I can always shim it just a little bit to get the perfect location if I don't do my math right. If I don't go far enough in, it's gonna hit 
right there every time. It's gonna pack it out. I'd rather go too far in with the wheel a little bit and then use a little bit of spacer to get it out just to center it because I know that I might make a mistake. That's one of the things that I've learned over the years. So if we circumvent that all that little funky math I did to push it in and we just go with what's actual, you can do a 4.25 um, front space and a 6.25 back space. That's going to give you a 10 and a half inch wheel. And that right there is your wheel. That's how I get the wheel sizes. So basically the back of this guy's car will ultimately have a What's it say? It's a 10 and a half inch wheel, but we talked about that earlier. It's actually going to be a nine and a half inch wheel, 9.5 inch wheel. This is what they'll call it with an actual size of 10 and a half, but it's called a nine and a half with a 6.25 inch backspace. That tells you everything. And let's just say it's a, uh, it's an 18 inch wheel, right? You want to double check this. Wheel manufacturers have their own ways of doing it. The car I measured the other day, this wheel well lip was a quarter inch closer to the tire than that wheel well lip. I'm sure his buddy Bobo in 1981 laid two quarter panels over it after he smashed into a tree. Who knows, right? You've got to do your measuring. You can't call somebody up and have them just give you some divine number you're gonna be having a rude awakening. So go through this, watch this video, unfortunately, a couple times. The front of the car, I give it a little more room in here. I want more like an inch, inch and a quarter at least, because the wheel's moving, okay? The other thing you gotta be attentive to is over the years, as the years go on, the wheel wells right here in the early 60s were kind of small, they were, they were small. They were meant for 13 and 14 inch wheels. So up to like 66, these were pretty small, but in 67, they got a little bit bigger. Six, 67, 68, 69, 70 got bigger yet. And then 71, 73 got bigger yet. So the tire diameter, I have a hard time with early model Mustangs going much over like 65, six, you can, but it gets hard over 25 and a half inch diameter tires. So you got to be careful and cognizant and where they'll hit is right in here where they enter the wheel well. It's, you can't, it's, it starts getting hard to put a 26. I mean, I'm sure every, there's going to be a guy's there. Oh, I put a 27 inch tire in, but for the average guy, you got to be attentive to this. The, uh, as the Trans Am series went on and racing went on, the tires got bigger and bigger and the car started making the, wheel wells bigger to accommodate these tires. So that's something to be aware of there. The long and the short of it is you got to measure your hub face to hub face. You got to measure your wheel wells. You got to get the size of the hole. A stiffer spring is not going to keep the tire from hitting the wheel well lip. So if you're hitting it, um, that's a subject. You just stiffer spring ain't going to do it. Um, and you got to take your time to find out what wheel companies are out there that actually give you the sizes you need. A lot of cheap wheel manufacturers give you option A, option B. And most of the time I get people calling me all the time hitting the wheel well lip because they didn't get enough backspace. Um, take your time, measure what you got. There's a lot more to it. This doesn't cover everything, but this sure gives you a good start. You can do the same measurement in the front of your car, hub face to hub face, wheel well lip to wheel well it have at it uh, measure the things that are going to be closest i use a straight edge sometimes with a, a tape measure to the and roll the hub around and see what it's going to hit um, just use your brain use a tape measure get out there all right thanks guys and i hope this video helps you out good luck getting a good wheel size and good luck finding the company that works with you the best thanks again